Wet sand will not fill the joints and you'll end up doing much more work than you need to. It's much more efficient to dry your sand prior to filling the joints. We usually do this by finding a place in the street or possibly even a customer's garage where you can just go ahead and spread the sand. To begin the interlock between pavers, it is important to do an initial compaction before filling the joints with sand. First, start around the perimeter of the project and then work back and forth going up the elevation. During initial compaction, the person compacting should mark the broken pavers while another person follows replacing them. All washed aggregate has a 30 to 40 percent void ratio, which essentially means it acts like a sponge when it comes in contact with water. To show you how important it is to dry out your joint sand, we have some typical sand here that hasn't been dried. And we're going to go ahead and try to fill the joints with it. Now on the other side of our driveway, we're using the sand that we've already pre-dried since this morning to show you the difference between a damp, wet sand and sand that you put out to dry and how easy one is to use in comparison with the other. When working with textured concrete pavers or special finishes, it's important to use a urethane mat underneath your compactor to help protect the tops. After over 10 passes, you can see we haven't even come close to filling these joints. The wet sand simply doesn't want to get into the joints. Another problem with using damp sand is it tends to cake over the pavers, giving us a false height over the top of our paver. Now in our area of the driveway where we used the sand that we had dried out earlier this morning, all of our joints are completely full. These joints were filled in two passes compared to the area where we did damp sand. You can see where you drying out your sand is going to save you in labor cost, it's going to make you faster, more efficient, and ultimately make you more money.